Pauline slowly opened her eyes, feeling disoriented and confused. She tried to sit up, but her head was pounding and her body felt heavy and sluggish. She looked around the room, trying to remember where she was and what had happened. As she struggled to piece together the events of the previous night, she heard a voice in the other room. It was her husband, talking to someone she didn't recognize. She strained to listen, but the words were muffled and hard to make out. Feeling uneasy, Pauline got up from the bed and stumbled into the living room. Her husband, Steve, was sitting on the couch, talking to a man she had never seen before. Good morning, sleepyhead, Steve said, smiling at her. This is my friend, John. He's just here for a quick visit. Pauline nodded, trying to smile back, but her mind was racing. She couldn't remember anything from the previous night, and she had no idea who John was or why he was here. As the men chatted, Pauline sat down on a chair and tried to shake off the fog that was clouding her thoughts. But the more she tried to focus, the more her head throbbed and her stomach churned. Eventually, she excused herself and went to the bathroom. As she washed her face, she caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror and gasped. Her eyes were bloodshot and there were dark circles under them. She looked pale and sickly, like she hadn't slept in days. Feeling a wave of panic wash over her, Podling tried to remember what had happened. Had she gotten sick? Had she taken something that had made her feel this way? As she stumbled back into the living room, her husband and John stopped talking and looked at her. She could feel their eyes on her, and she suddenly felt vulnerable and exposed. Are you okay, honey? Steve asked, his voice laced with concern. Pauline shook her head, feeling tears prick at the corners of her eyes. She didn't know what was happening to her, but she knew that something was wrong. Can we talk? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Steve nodded, and the two of them went into the bedroom, leaving John in the living room. As soon as the door closed, Pauline turned to her husband and burst into tears. I don't know what's happening to me, she sobbed. I don't remember anything from last night, and I feel like I'm losing my mind. Steve held her tightly, his arms wrapped around her as she cried. It's okay, honey, he said softly. We'll figure this out. I'll help you. But as the day wore on, Pauline's unease only grew. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, that there was something her husband wasn't telling her. Late that night, after Steve had gone to bed, Pauline sat in the living room, scrolling through her phone. She was looking for answers, trying to piece together the events of the previous night. And then she saw it. A message from a number she didn't recognize, with a single sentence, I hope you had a good time last night. Pauline's heart sank. She knew now that something terrible had happened, something that her husband was trying to hide from her. She didn't know what it was, but she knew that she needed to find out. The next day, she confronted Steve, demanding to know the truth. And that's when he finally told her. He had invited a group of his friends over the previous night, and they had all been drinking and partying. As soon as Pauline heard the voice on the phone, she bolted upright in bed, her heart pounding in her chest. She looked over at her husband, who was still fast asleep, completely unaware of the conversation taking place in the other room. Pauline quietly got out of bed, careful not to wake her husband, and made her way to the living room. She could hear her husband's voice coming from the phone, but she couldn't make out what he was saying. As she got closer to the living room, the words became clearer. Her husband was speaking in hushed tones, trying not to wake her, but his words were still audible. Pauling heard her husband say, Yes, I understand. I'll be there as soon as I can. Thank you for letting me know. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Was her husband having an affair? Was he involved in something illegal? Pauline's mind was racing with possibilities, but she couldn't be sure what was happening until she heard more. She stayed hidden in the hallway, listening to her husband's conversation. He spoke for a few more minutes, then hung up the phone and went back to bed. Pauline waited a few minutes to make sure her husband was asleep, then crept back into the bedroom. She lay in bed, her mind racing with thoughts and questions. 
she didn't know what to do or who to talk to. The next morning, Pauline's husband woke up as usual and got ready for work. Pauline watched him, trying to read his face for any signs of guilt or remorse, but he seemed completely normal. Before he left for work, her husband kissed her goodbye and said, I'll be home late tonight. Don't wait up for me. Pauline was left alone with her thoughts, still unsure of what to do or say. She spent the day trying to keep herself busy, but her mind kept drifting back to the phone call she had overheard. When her husband finally came home that night, she tried to act normal, but she couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. As they sat down to dinner, Pauline finally mustered up the courage to ask her husband about the phone call she had overheard. Her husband looked at her, surprised. What phone call? He asked. The one you had last night, Pauline said, her voice trembling. I don't know what you're talking about, her husband said, looking confused. Pauline couldn't believe it. Had she imagined the whole thing? Was she going crazy? For the next few days, Pauline couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. She kept a close eye on her husband, looking for any signs of guilt or wrongdoing, but he seemed completely normal. Then one day, Pauline received a call from her husband's boss. He told her that her husband had been offered a job in another city and that they would be moving in a few weeks. Pauline was stunned. She had no idea that her husband had been looking for a new job, let alone one in another city. As she hung up the phone, Pauline realized that her overactive imagination had gotten the best of her. She had jumped to conclusions and assumed the worst without having all the facts. She felt foolish for having doubted her husband and vowed to never let her imagination get the best of her again. From that day forward, she made a conscious effort to communicate openly and honestly with her husband, and their relationship grew stronger as a result. Pauline's heart sank as she watched the officer lead her husband away in handcuffs. She knew deep down that he was guilty, but it didn't make the situation any less painful. Her mind was a blur as she tried to process everything that had just happened. Over the next few weeks, Pauline struggled to come to terms with her husband's betrayal. She had always thought they had a happy marriage, but now she realized that she didn't really know him at all. She was angry and hurt, but she was also relieved that he had been caught before he could do any more harm. As she started to pick up the pieces of her life, Pauline began to question everything she thought she knew about herself. She had been so focused on her husband and their life together that she had lost sight of her own hopes and dreams. Now she was faced with the daunting task of rebuilding her life from scratch. It wasn't easy, but Pauline slowly began to find her footing. She reached out to old friends and family members, and they welcomed her back with open arms. She started to think about the things that had once made her happy, like painting and cooking, and she found that she still had a passion for them. Months went by, and Pauline's wounds began to heal. She had a newfound sense of strength and independence, and she was determined to make the most of her second chance. She knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but she also knew that she was strong enough to face whatever came her way. One day, as she was working on a painting in her new apartment, the doorbell rang. She hesitated for a moment before answering it, but when she did, she was surprised to see a man standing on her doorstep. Hi, he said, smiling. I'm sorry to bother you, but I noticed your painting through the window and I just had to come over and see it up close. It's really beautiful. Pauline was taken aback by the man's kindness and she found herself warming up to him quickly. They struck up a conversation, and before she knew it, hours had passed. As the man was getting ready to leave, he turned to Pauline and said, You know, it's funny. I almost didn't come over here today. I was feeling a little down, and I almost talked myself out of it. But I'm so glad I didn't. Meeting you has been the highlight of my day. Pauline smiled feeling a warmth in her chest that she hadn't felt in a long time. She realized that she was starting to move on, and that there was hope for her yet. As the man walked away, she felt a renewed sense of hope and optimism. She knew that there would still be tough times ahead, but she was ready to face them head-on. 
She had learned that life was full of surprises, both good and bad, and that the key was to stay open to whatever came her way. As she picked up her brush and returned to her painting, Pauline knew that she was going to be okay. John's heart sank as he watched Pauline leave. He knew he had to find a way to make things right. He spent the entire day trying to get in touch with her, but she wouldn't answer his calls. Finally, late that night, she answered. Pauline, please forgive me, John said, desperation in his voice. I was wrong, and I'm sorry. I promise to never do anything like that again. Pauline was silent for a moment, considering his words. John, I can't just forgive you like that, she said finally. You broke my trust. I need time to think. John understood. Take all the time you need, he said. I'll do whatever it takes to earn back your trust. Over the next few weeks, John worked hard to prove to Pauline that he was committed to their marriage. He went to therapy and even started attending church with her. Slowly but surely, their relationship began to heal. It wasn't easy, but John knew he had to work hard to make things right. He realized that he had taken Pauline for granted, and he was determined to never make that mistake again. He loved her more than anything, and he knew that he couldn't live without her. Eventually, Pauline forgave him. It wasn't an easy process, but they were able to work through their issues and come out stronger on the other side. John knew that he had been given a second chance, and he was determined to make the most of it. From that day forward, John and Pauline's relationship was stronger than ever. They had both learned the hard way that trust is the foundation of any successful marriage, and they were committed to never taking each other for granted again. Together, they faced life's challenges with grace and love, knowing that they had each other's backs no matter what. As for the mysterious stranger on the phone that fateful morning, John never did find out who he was, but he knew one thing for sure. He would never let anyone come between him and the love of his life again. Months passed, and John and Pauling continued to grow together. They laughed, they cried, and they made new memories together. John had learned from his mistake, and he had never felt closer to Pauline. One day, as they sat on the couch together, John turned to Pauline and said, You know, I don't think I ever properly thanked you for forgiving me. You could have left me, but you didn't. Pauline smiled at him. I forgave you because I love you, she said. And I knew that if we worked hard enough, we could get through anything together. John reached over and took Pauline's hand. I'm so grateful for you, he said. I promise to never let you down again. They sat there in silence for a few moments, just enjoying each other's company. John realized that, even though he had made a terrible mistake, it had brought them closer together than ever before. He knew that he had been given a second chance, and he was determined to make the most of it. As the years passed, John and Pauline's love for each other only grew stronger. They faced new challenges together, but they always came out on the other side stronger and more in love than ever before. Looking back on that fateful day when he caught Pauline slipping sleeping pills into his tea, John realized that it had been a wake-up call for him. He had taken his marriage for granted, and he had almost lost the love of his life because of it. But now, as he sat with Pauline in their cozy living room, he knew that he was the luckiest man in the world. He had a wife who loved him unconditionally and he was committed to spending the rest of his life making her happy. Together, they continued to build a life filled with love, trust, and happiness. And they both knew that, no matter what came their way, they could always count on each other to make it through. They say that love is about forgiveness, and John and Pauline's story was a testament to that. It wasn't easy, but they had worked through their problems and emerged on the other side stronger and more committed to each other than ever before. As they grew old together, they continued to cherish every moment they spent together. They traveled the world, tried new things, and enjoyed each other's company every day. They knew that they were lucky to have found each other, and they never took their love for granted. And when John looked back on that day when he caught Pauline slipping sleeping pills into his tea, he knew that it had been a turning point for their marriage. 
It had forced them to confront their problems head-on and work through them together. In the end, it was their love and commitment to each other that had seen them through. And as they looked forward to their future together, they knew that they would continue to face whatever challenges came their way, hand in hand, with love and forgiveness in their hearts. And so, John and Pauline lived the rest of their lives together, growing old but never losing the spark of love that had brought them together so many years ago. They were always there for each other, through the good times and the bad, supporting each other in every way they could. When John finally passed away, Pauline was heartbroken, but she knew that he would want her to keep going, to keep living life to the fullest. And so she did. She continued to travel, to try new things, and to live life to the fullest. But she never forgot the love that she and John had shared. It was a love that had endured through the years, a love that had seen them through all of life's challenges, and it was a love that she would always treasure, even as she moved forward without him. In the end, Pauline knew that she had been blessed to have had such a wonderful partner in life, and she knew that she would carry the memory of their love with her always, as a reminder of the power of love and forgiveness to conquer all.